And I have an older sister, Rachel, she's here. She should be speaking, but she's embarrassed. <laughs> she's, she's, she has to say it, but she really became religious. She became Hasidic in one year. Like, she became so religious, and I'm like, no, 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 I cannot. So I was very slow, and the staff never, ever, ever pressured us. They never pushed us. They just took us as we are, and they helped us grow, and they did things that no other teacher would do. For an example, they took us to Junis. Uh, Sara. She took us to Julie and she said, you bring me in all your pants and all your shorts and all the short skirts and then instead we're going to trade it off for for skirts and Junies. And we came and we brought bags of stuff and like, yeah, you know, free clothes, why not? <laughs> and we went and the owner of Junies, she, she was so inspired and she said, oh, so we took like, I don't know how much the mother just took it. We were all like a bunch of girls, oh, we like this, like this. And they, at the end, the bill came out to so much, and the owner, she literally just said, you know, just give me, I forgot how much it was, it was under hundred dollars, like a whole bunch of stuff. And when I saw that, I was like, wow, like, who would do that for you? If it's not real, like, if it's, like, obviously, you know, there's a truth to it, obviously there's a beauty in keeping this, so. And then, like, other examples where I would stay after school, school ended at 4, 3, 2, 5, 4. I used to just stay with Mrs. Bright for, for hours, talking, debating, how do I know this, how does this, how is that, da, 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 da. Which other teacher would do that? Which other teacher would sit there and give her time and like really, really, really debate the topics? And it was just amazing. And the more that I learned, the more I kept, the more I kept, the more my mom went crazy. The more she went crazy, the whole family went crazy. And it was just like, and then it, it came to a point where I'm not really, um, um, accepted in my family, you know, in all my old friends, the, the family, and not, and I'm not accepted in the very religious world. I would come to Borbrook and I would do that whole bump thing to fit in, but for some reason I would still get these looks, like, oh, who are you? And I'm like, I don't belong here, I don't belong there, like, what am I? Who am I? Like, it's hard, because you, you don't fit in here, you don't fit in there, at home, you know, they think, you know, you snap. And in the streets of Borough Park, unfortunately, you get stared at, and I'm just like, what's wrong with me? And Baruch Hashem, I had a group of my friends from my class, Aura, Tivia, Karen, Batel, Camilla, like everyone, everyone. Like, <laughs> if not for these girls, I don't know if I, if I would have done it. Like, we kept Shabbat, and after Shabbat, we would go and do our stuff. You know, so we were like, Becoming religious, so we transitioned together so smoothly, so beautifully. Like we started off keeping an hour of Shabbat, then it became two hours and three hours, and then I remember I had a hard time with eating kosher gum, and my friend Ora was like, "Throw it away! You have to throw it away!" Like just small things like that, where I helped her with you know transitioning into listening to only Jewish music. For me, that was easy. For her, that was hard. But we helped each other. It was like, you know, our whole class was just together. We were united. We helped each other. How did we learn this from where? It's our teachers, our teachers, our staff. And Rabbi Kukov, and I'm sorry to embarrass you, but he's my grandfather. And when I had uh, my baby, I called him begging him, please come to Denver. I'll give you the sandat. You deserve it. You, you know, you, like, it's because of you that this is here. And unfortunately, he couldn't come. But... I'm always thinking about him. I'm always, I'm always like, you know, thinking about all the staff in the school. I have not forgotten any of them, and they all look just as beautiful as they did ten years ago. And um, it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing to see where the Jewish people who are on such a high level, and yet they take it, like it, it's, it's, they, they, they make it their business to help out other people who do not have what they have. And now that I'm here, I look at my kids and I say, Baruch Hashem, I'm going to have to struggle them. You know, like, like everything they have, you know, Kashrut, Shabbat, and they go to a yeshiva, a good yeshiva, and they will be accepted and be sacred, Baruch Hashem. And I just look at them and I say, thank God that they're not going to have the struggle that I had. I had the struggle that they worked and they cried and they sacrificed and only now, only now, you know, everybody will understand my mother my aunts and uncles, now they say, wow, you see the kids on the streets, oh my god, they're all, you know, they're, I don't, I don't know how much you guys know, but I'm not going to expose you guys, <laughs> they're just like, they're going crazy, the world is going crazy, literally, and they say, thank God, you didn't listen to us, thank God, 
that you continue going to yeshiva and you change your life. At the time, they didn't understand. Uh, uh, there was a hilarious story where it was on Hanukkah, and we said that we have to do candles. And I'm like, okay, so the school gives us um, a, a, a menorah. It's like a disposable menorah type of thing. And those candles, you know, the red and blue candles. And I come home, like I'm doing this, and I put it on the on the windowsill, and I light it, and then it drips onto the onto the the, the windowsill, and my mother comes like, "What is this? I just painted." No, 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 no. She told me, "No, you're not doing it." So the next day, I'm like, "Okay, I'll do it in my room." So I did it again, and my mom said she got so angry, she threw everything in the garbage. And my mom she's not a bad person; she just she comes from you know communism. They prohibited, so she didn't have shelter. It'll be shackled, and that's why she didn't understand what's the point of all this. So she threw it all in the garbage when she left. I took it out. You know, of course, everything was done with me, my sister. She was there all along, and we did it again. But I became smart this time. I took aluminum foil, I put it underneath, and I did the candles. And then I see that it's dripping again onto the onto the window so, so I took a napkin and I'm cleaning it and caught on fire. And I'm like, oh, and I just threw it on my bed that's made out of wood. And before I know my whole bed is on flames, and I'm running back and forth with a bucket of water. And I was like, what is she up to now? <laughs> I'm putting it on the fire and she comes and she says, oh my god. She started like, she put it out with me obviously, but then she's like, Oh my god, they're brainwashing you, they told you to kill the whole family, so you burn down the house, what are they teaching you? She called Rabbi Kuban and telling him, they are not going to school, do not arrange a bus service for them, that's it, they're going to pop school, you guys are crazy, you know? She was going crazy, so um, at the end of the day, she called the grandparents, the uncles, they came, they're like, what are you doing, this is crazy, they're separating the family, blah blah blah. And you know, Baruch Hashem, that we didn't stop there, we continued. It only helped us get stronger because, as I heard, that it's all the Yitzhara, the Yitzhara. It's like, <laughs> it, it preventing us. And I'm like, how come it's working so hard to hold us back? There must be something there. There must be something good because when you go to the streets and you want to do X, Y, and Z, there's no resistance. It's just, yeah. But when it comes to Judaism, for some reason, it's not okay. So we continue going strong and. Um, it was only because of the staff who supported us, who listened to us, who helped us, who loved us, who, had, who had, was patient with us. They were just so patient and they never ever like hurried us up, like, oh you're annoying, what are you doing? It was always so loving and so inspirational and all these assemblies, I still remember them. <laughs> and everything that I learned here in Shashal Gisiako, I take these tools and I apply it to my community in Denver. And the, I'm, I'm in charge of, of, of the Rosh Chodesh events. And I literally, all these ideas, you know, Miss Samuel's ideas, I, all the stories that you told, I tell it over. It's so in my mind, it's fresh. And um, so it's not, just, it's not just that they help me, they help the community in Denver, because if not for them, I would not be there. I would not know how to teach or whatever. And Baruch Hashem is my children who are going to be like I tell them the story, I tell them all the time, Shoshala, Shoshala, and you know, the yearbook, you know, they look through it and they're not going to have the struggles that I had because I did it for them. They can have other struggles, but unfortunately there's only one Shoshala in Seattle. And if I'm still in Colorado, you know, she's not going to have that, but at least I can give her whatever I know. And it just it gives me comfort to know that there's a school, you know, in Shoshala, Seattle in the world. And we honestly, we don't know where our kids are going to end up in their generation. It's like, you just never know. It could be, you know, huge rabbits and the kids are going over there. But it's like, you, you just never know. So you helping out the school, you could be helping out your future generations because you don't know what's going to happen these days. So it's not just you're helping other people, you should think about it as helping yourself. So every penny that you give to this community, to this school, um, you're going to be a part of a bigger picture where everything that these kids are going to be learning, everything that these kids are going to be doing, and their children, and their children, and their children will be all, you will have a merit, and you will have a peace in that, and your heaven is going to be huge. So isn't that worth it? <laughs> you know, of course, and I just, I feel like um, I know for sure that this school will not close down. It will continue going. You know, just like 
the Jewish people have been you know, prosecuted, and against all odds, we're so here, right? Shashal and Mishab is going to be here too, forever. The until, until Mishab comes. But the question is, who's going to be, who's going to have the Zahud, or who's going to be Zohar, you guys understand? To be a part of this amazing school, to be a part of these kids' mitzvot, to be a part of these kids changing their lives. It's going to be here, you know, with or without you, but are you going to, are you going to grab the opportunity of helping this school continue on? And not just continue on as like, you know, barely making it, but flourish. Because this school, I think it doubled in size, right? I think since I was there, it, it's huge. It, it was, I had a small class and it was just, in this generation, we need it so bad. We need the school so badly. It's so bad. More than 10 years ago, I just spoke to a few teachers and they all said the school changed, like, in a good way, but the generation is changing. And I see. I see, you know, Baruch Hashem, I have kids, and they tell me some things, I'm so close with it, I'm like, I would never talk like that, I was a public school kid, like, like, it's just, the generation is just different, it's just different, it's in the air, and they feel it, and they are, are catching on to it, and we need the school so badly, it's not easy to give unconditional, unconditional love, it's not easy to have patience, it's not easy to give your heart into, into, into kids who don't have it. And this school has what it takes. We need to support it. We need to be a part of it. We, if Hashem put you here, there's a reason. If you're hearing me speak and you heard all these amazing speakers speak before, like before me, there's a reason. There's a reason that you all are here right now. It's not just for nothing, right? Hargacha <laughs> Pratis. You guys are all here because you need to help. And if anybody can please, please donate or all these raffle tickets, if you can do your best to somehow, you know, sell them, sell them, sell them, because we need the school to continue. And together, united, we can do it together. And I give everyone a blessing that um, you should never need the services of the school. <laughs> I give you a bracha that your children should always be on the dara, should always see the beauty of Hashem, this dark world where it's so, it's so hard to see Hashem. I hope that you and your children are only going to be givers of Kiru and never takers. I hope that everyone has health and Parnasa and Shumbai and love and happiness. And may everybody have this uh, flame inside of them and only help other candles in the world. Because all of us are initial. At the end of the day, everyone has a spark inside of them. It just has to be lit. And and by giving, you're never losing. You're just you're getting bigger and bigger. So thank you everyone for for listening to me. Thank you, Casey. We're actually going to do something very special and bring up your classmates to celebrate with us. This is Rachel, Casey's sister. Thank you, baby. This is Casey's baby. We have her wonderful friend, Adina. Please come up. This is Adina from the past. Show the Shabbos for me, Mr. Queens. We have Olga from Rachel's past and our dear Sylvia, who is a teacher, one of our preschool assistants in Joshua. We have one of our 10th graders, Miri, Miri Michael, and Elena. Please come. Some of our wonderful, wonderful girls. All of our wonderful teachers, thank you so much. This is uh, this is Shashal's birthday. Thank you very much for coming to support Casey and uh, your dream come true. So I can say you're just uh, a dream come true. Hashem should just all Hashem should bless every single one of you with generations and generations of tzaddikim and tzaddikim. Thank you very much.